So a question that I see come up kind of often in the game maker community is whether one kind of code executes faster than another kind of code, or whether one way of doing things is more optimal than another way of doing things. And the usual response that people get to that is something along the lines of test it yourself. And I realize that some people might not know a good way to do that. So this video is going to be all about how to find out how fast a piece of code runs. And there are a couple of ways to do that that I know of. The way that I usually do it would be to create an empty project called speed test. And that already exists because I tried recording this video already and it didn't go very well. So I'm going to do it again. And I'm just going to create an empty room and go into the creation code. If you were doing this in anything besides Game Maker, this would probably be a console window application without any like graphical window or anything like that. So to start with, Game Maker provides a couple different timing functions. Uh, you have date, current, date time, which is basically a glorified Unix timestamp. You do have, of course, things like current second and current hour and current minute. Um, also, if you're using Game Maker Studio, and this is going to be the important one, you have get timer. And what this specifically is going to do is return the number of microseconds that have passed since the game has started. And if you're not familiar with the term of microseconds, there are one million of those in a whole second. So there are uh, 1,000 of those per, for a millisecond. So that should give you a decent sense of how, uh, how precise a unit of time this is. Anyway, uh, what you can do after, you're, uh, after you've got a handle on this function, is save it to a variable. So I'm going to call it t start. And if you want to test the speed of code, you can later create another variable. I don't know, maybe t, t end equals get timer once again. And most of you have probably already figured out, but anything that happens between these two lines of code, the amount of time that takes to execute is going to be the difference between t and and t start. And this is going to be any other number. It's going to be the number of microseconds it took from here to here to execute. And you can show that with show message. Or you can just say show message of t start minus get timer, but I think this is a little bit easier to see what's going on. Anyway. Let's start with something easy. So let's start with how about the amount of time it takes to assign how about 5 plus 13 to a local variable. So we're going to run the game. Hopefully this won't take too long. Excellent. That took 19 microseconds apparently. And we're going to, after that, how about the amount of time it takes to execute a trigonometry function because I always seem to go to trigonometry functions when I, need a, when I need a arbitrary simple math example. Let's see how long this takes to execute. All right, that took 28 microseconds, which is a little bit slower than the um, than the addition, but it's still pretty fast. It's probably quite a bit faster than uh, than I could do trigonometry in my head. And if you were really in a hurry, you could stop right there and say that yes, indeed, trigonometry is slower than addition and subtraction. But there's more. So for all the precision that getTimer gives you, uh, it's really not a good idea to just test um, statement at a time and use that for your results. As uh, pretty much any scientist would tell you, you're going to want to repeat this experiment over and over and over to make sure that your results are uh, a little bit more conclusive than they would be with a sample size of just one. And I guess you could just keep mashing F5 and uh, writing down the results that you get. But you could also say, you could also put this in a loop, and I'm going to give a loop of how about, uh, that's 1,000, 10,000, I'm going to give this 100,000 repetitions. And this is going to execute 100,000 times, and then it will give us the amount of time it takes that to happen, and then we can divide that by 10,000. That is what, 101,669. I'm actually writing that down on a piece of paper in front of me so I don't forget. And if you divide that by 100,000, you are going to get a result that's very different from the one that we got before. It's uh, a little bit over one microsecond per operation. And the reason for that, I'll explain after I go back and do addition. So what was it, 5 plus 13? The numbers don't really matter as long as they're, uh, as long as I'm like testing the same thing every time. For this, I get 44,000 
I have no idea what I just wrote down on that paper, but it sure wasn't a 44. Uh, 44,197. And if you divide that by 100,000, you are going to get uh, a little bit less than a half of a microsecond per operation, which is, again, a lot slower than, what was it, 19 microseconds it spat out the first time? Anyway, the reason for that is that the get timer functions themselves take time to execute, and you want to minimize the impact that that has on the code that runs as much as possible. So if you're testing just one statement, the additional overhead time of the get timer functions will be decently significant. But if you're testing 100,000 runs of, um, of whatever statement it happens to be, then having a single get timer function, or I guess having two get timer functions uh, added on top of that, really won't have much of an impact at all, uh, proportionally, and you'll get a much more accurate answer. And you can put pretty much whatever code you want in here. Some functions, like uh, especially uh, draw functions and file I.O., and if you're doing uh, things with online play, uh, like functions to get files from the internet, those are usually going to be the slowest things that you'll ever do in programming. Um, if I were to do, how about draw circle from, I don't know, 32, 32 with a radius of like 16. If I were to do this, this gave me 574,990, which is which is five and a half times longer than the trigonometry functions. It's not going to actually draw anything on the screen because it's happening in the creation code, but it will still execute and it will still give the result. So if you weren't convinced already, draw functions are slow. So if you're having problems with your game being slow, that's probably it. The main reason being that the uh, the game is having to communicate between two different parts of um two different parts of your computer, that being your graphics card and your CPU, and that tends to be really slow. Um, again, uh, file I/O, like writing or reading from files, that's communicating between your computer's hard drive and um, and the central processing unit, which takes time. Now, some of you might have also noticed something else that's adding to uh, to overhead time, and that would be that the repeat loop itself is going to take up processing time. And if you wanted to get an even more accurate answer than even this is, you could do something similar. So we're going to say no, I did not want to actually do that. Okay, so let me uh, copy and paste properly this time. Um, T start, T end, and just an empty repeat loop. And you know what, because why not? I'm going to uh, see how long it takes the repeat loop with nothing in it to execute. That gives me an answer of 43,259. Again, that's a little bit of overhead time. Uh, instead of saving that as T difference, I'm going to save that result as T loop. And down here, I'm going to subtract the time it takes to actually execute the repeat loop. So T difference minus T loop. And that's going to be approximately how long it takes the, uh, the draw code itself to operate. So let's see, what is that? That is, this time around, it's a little bit less than it was um, the first time I tested it. So 54... 5407, so yeah, a little bit less time. Again, uh, draw functions are very expensive, so uh, the amount of time it takes the actual code to execute is probably going to dwarf the amount of time it takes the repeat loop to execute. Uh, let's try that with uh, the sine function, so sine of whatever number I hit, and let's run that again. All right, this time it's actually only about a third of what it was the first time, so that's 35,000 microseconds. So each individual statement, it would appear, only takes about a third of a microsecond to operate, which is a lot faster than um, than the initial value of, what, 40, 42, 45? I forget what it was at the beginning of this video. And lastly, if you want to see some uh, really fast code happening, uh, 13 plus 5 is, uh, I believe, the simple addition one. If you wanted to, I guess it would be best to uh, actually say, like, var a equals 0, so you could account for the time it takes to... Uh, to assign the variable. But anyway, addition and subtraction 100,000 times uh, gives a result of only 8,294. So if you want to round that out a little bit, about 8.3 um, milliseconds. And if you want to divide that by 100,000, then yeah, addition and subtraction is really fast on a computer in, a, in the year of 2016. So before I actually end this video, I'm going to use a real world example, as it were. Um, probably the most well known case of uh, whether one type of code executes faster than another would be the best way to initialize an array. So the usual way that you would initialize an array would be something like for var i equals zero, 
in a for loop, i is less than how about 100, and i plus plus, or i plus equals 1, whichever you prefer. And then you would say array of i equals whatever. Let's actually not make it a string, because I think strings are a little bit slower than, um, than numbers. But that's a discussion for another day. You can test that on your own. Anyway, this is going to take... I, uh, I really need to get my pen out already. I don't know why I keep closing my pen every time I, uh, I finish one of these trials, because it's not like I'm never going to write with it again. So this is taking some time to execute. This is actually taking a long time. What is this? 5, 7, 9, 7, 4, 6, 6. So that took about 5 seconds. And the other way to initialize an array, it's a little bit less straightforward, but it would be to start out i equals 99, i is greater than or equal to 0, and i instead of plus plus, i minus minus. And let's see how long this takes. This only took about four and a half seconds, which is almost a second and a half faster than the other method. And the reason for that has to do with the way that GameMaker allocates memory for arrays um, inside the computer in the RAM. But I really don't want to get too off topic in this video. So if you want to read more about that, I'll leave some links that you can uh, get started with in the description of this video. So I really should end it off before I just keep on talking forever because I know I have the ability to do that. I do hope you found this interesting. I do hope you found this useful, especially. I won't have this exact file available for download in the description of this video. Uh, this is really simple. You can do this on your own in like two or three minutes. But I will have something else. I made a bit of a more graphical representation of um, speed of code tests a while ago, and I think I'll, uh, I'll let you download that instead because it's a little bit more interesting. And it should have the source code included, so you can go and mess around with it too if you want to. Anyway, uh, my name is Dragonite. And I will see you all later.